Good morning guys. First day we're headed to the stand. So like I said last night, it's about 5.30, getting picked up by Cody. We're gonna go sit, uh, I'm gonna sit in the tree stand and Bridget's gonna sit in the ground blind. We're gonna hunt in the first few hours of daylight. And after that, he says it's pretty mellow just because it's so hot. So it's probably 78, 80 degrees in the dark out there right now. So we're definitely not getting it cold. It's humid out here, holy cow. My camera just got fogged up. <laughs> I can't see out of my camera. Texas. Good morning. Good morning, y'all get some sleep? This is Cody. What's up? In Texas in the fog. He's a little blurry. <laughs> yeah, the camera just... I think it's coming from the dry inside to the humid outside. Yeah. I was right. 78 degrees. Headed to the stand. So here we go. I'm going to set the uh, camera up on the tripod. And uh, we're going to sit and wait for first light, so hopefully some access deer come in. Got the bow rack, got the bow down there in my backpack. Just going to get it all set up and then uh, set up a couple cameras. guys that's the uh, first sit of the hunt day number one and we were like that close to getting ready for a shot on that big buck he only had one antler and uh, after they bailed out I, I text Cody he's like yeah we've seen that buck before so he's been in here for a while um, but he just hasn't been around for the last few weeks but he's big big mature buck and the colors on his neck and his head were really really cool so anyways, we're going to pack up and go get Bridget and head out. 
I was close. Bottle of water in here. You guys have seen that buck around here before? He, we have not seen him on camera for probably a month. Oh, really? He had said the exact same thing to a guy we had hunting probably over a month ago. He saw him for five seconds, so like 50, 60 yards. Couldn't get a shot. And this guy's a professional archer. He was a mm -hmm. big folk at him. Couldn't get a shot. Let him go. And he was hung up on that book all week. We've been. I haven't seen him on camera since then. All morning, I've got that one hole to look through, and then from that, you can kind of see pieces of everything. And there was a ton of whitetail. Uh, there was three little axis bucks, and I was just like, "Ah, we'll let them walk," you know. But they were fun to watch. And all of a sudden, some does kind of came in the back. Yeah. They were coming up, and all of a sudden, boom. I mean, the color on the big mature bucks are so different. It's like um, a their dark, colors. almost like a maroonish, reddish, purplish kind of tint to them. They're beautiful. He had a super white, like, neck or something. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I hit record on this. And you guys, I'm sure can, I've played it back a couple times already. But as soon as I hit record, it was like his nose was already in there. He didn't like something gone. And then from there, it just kind of, like, ended. Dang. That close. No luck? No axis deer? No. Just white tail? Yeah. Dang it. Well, this spot hasn't had a working trail cam, so we're gonna set one up real quick. And uh, that way we can see what's on it through the nighttime, see if any axis deer are hitting this. The white tail are hitting it way hard. Way hard. Well, we had to rig it up with a deer shoulder blade, but it's up. <laughs> Should work. Should get anything that passes through right here. Well, the morning hut's over. Uh, we are going to run some errands, but first we're going to stop at Flagstop Cafe. It's like a gas station with a little restaurant. Cody says this is the happening spot for breakfast. All right, Cody. Going with country breakfast. Can't go wrong with that. That took about three and a half minutes. Maybe four. But here's our breakfast. Bridget went with the biscuit. We got the huevos rancheros. Cody. I got my mountain ops, of course. And then the egg, hash brown, sausage, wheat toast, meal. My favorite. <laughs> so we're going to grab breakfast and then we're going to take off and go get some feed. Uh, which brings me to a conversation piece I want to have maybe on the next drive is hunting over bait. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I want to I want to hear what Cody has to say about it because he he's hunted here in Texas for years and he also gets to hunt and take a lot of people hunting from out of state and uh, it's pretty much some of the first times I've ever hunted over bait was in Texas and when we did our whitetail hunt and then here so kind of a funny topic I know a lot of people like I said don't like it so we'll have a little conversation after breakfast it smells like feed we're uh, getting the special the special mix um. Yeah. Well, we made it to, um, this is another property that Cody has access to. This is the property where I shot my axis doe last time we were hunting out here. So we just saw, I think five or six axis does and fawns over here by some pear trees. What's interesting about this property is that again, it's just kind of like an urban area where people have houses big farms horse pastures and like large acres not huge but big enough that it, the neighborhood is definitely spread out but man this is like the this is just like urban deer hunting i don't know how else to say it these deer basically live through these properties they're 100 percent wild there's no high fence anywhere you can see all the fences are just normal height they can jump that stuff and uh they just live in and out of here and they use the creek bottoms and the woods to kind of move around and they just stay in these like oaks and everything. It's pretty interesting, but we are going to set out some bait. Again, we're going to have that conversation here shortly. Um, get this place ready, put up a trail camera, and we might hunt here tomorrow. Getting back out here. Bridget's going to sit the tree stand uh, that I sat this morning. So I'm going to sit the ground blind. Good luck, babe. Bridget didn't see any axis deer in the ground blind this morning. So she was pretty upset when I showed her all the video of axis deer I got. She's like, you didn't shoot one? So she's ready to shoot one. I've already shot a doe, so I'm kind of holding out. As much as I want meat, kind of holding out for a minute. I don't know if urban hunting is like the best 
verbiage for what we're doing but it's like I said earlier it's just these farms this is like a family farm where people come what do they do here like events and it's a uh, um, wildlife preserve and um, they do farmers markets here and oh cool yeah so local farmers bring their stuff and and sell it here well, what's funny is we just parked right back there not in the car but in that pickup and we're literally walking to the blind uh, trying to sneak in kind of the back door I guess from this angle uh, all these axis deer and a ton of whitetail too like you saw this morning they just you know use these creek bottoms they've got water down in the creek bottoms and they kind of just roll through the property and it doesn't seem like these animals they definitely don't migrate there's no no need to migrate for winter or anything like that so they pretty much spend their entire life just around this property and it's probably a handful of others right yeah i think a lot of people misunderstand this style of hunting and most people that talk negatively about it myself included when i was younger is they just never tried it so that's why it's called hunting not killing <laughs> yeah <laughs> So uh, but I got a tripod for this cam. I'm gonna do the GoPro on my stabilizer. That way it can get me drawn back and everything, but pretty much everything's gonna be a 25 to 35 yard shot. So hopefully big axis buck comes in tonight. If you consider a hard hunt, if you only consider the physical side of it, this is not a hard hunt. If you consider sitting in a hundred degree hot box for hours hard, it's gonna be a hard hunt. <laughs> you know, this guy's gonna get set up, sit still and be patient.
Well guys, it's been about an hour since I shot that buck. Decided just to sit in the blind so I don't um, interfere with Bridget's stand, which is not very far from here. But that buck piled up about 50 yards past the feeder. I could see his antler just coming out of the grass right now. And that was really cool seeing that buck come in. He just broke the brush line, marched right in. Must have felt really comfortable with all those white-tailed deer in there. And he went right to the bottom of the feeder and just was doing circles there and I couldn't get a shot. It lasted about 10 to 12 minutes just waiting to get a shot. And there was one time I put my finger on the trigger, started getting comfortable, and that white tail swung around day one and we got the goal a mature buck my first access buck super cool thank you guys chris jeff cody thank you so much for having us out here get it done done let's go yeah <laughs> right there yeah so he didn't go far at all that's awesome i had to calm myself because like for 10 minutes he was there and all those Toes are right so much just moving around. Right through it. Smoke City. That's ants all over it already. That pivoting blade. The sever, right? Went around something. Yeah. That was new. Good night. Check it old, out. that big old head on him. So what'd you think when he first started coming in? Shooter. I mean, no doubt, huh? Their neck and their contrast, they stick out big time from like the does and the small bucks. Yeah. We, uh, we took the last little bit of light. We had a really pretty sunset. Check that out. We took some really cool pictures. I mean, the shot was perfect i mean that's pretty much right where you want to hit him i was in money aiming low he sunk into it this is using that sever mechanical broadhead that's the in or that's the, what do they call this the entrance. entrance yeah that's what i was looking for that's the entrance the exit a little smaller right in the boiler room though mm. Mm. Go, like 40, 50 yards? yeah 40 50 yards he's just piled up we're gonna take care of him we're gonna go get bridget Told her just to sit till dark, so she's gonna sit the last 10 minutes or so of light. But uh, like I said earlier, we got it done day one. <laughs> I'm kind of bummed that Bridget left the blind. Now I got a buck. But uh, that was pretty rad. Good looking buck, man. Aren't these things pretty? Seriously, the prettiest animal I've ever hunted. This looks like they took a razor blade right to the burr of his antlers. He's so pretty, so thank you, thank you, Mr. Buck. And these guys put in a ton of work to offer us a good hunt and take care of us. So like I said, thank you to these guys. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I promise we're going to get on the topic of the baiting. Um, but I think we're just going to enjoy this moment. So make sure you check tomorrow's uh, video. And uh, we'll discuss all that. So... For now, we gotta take care of this guy, take him to the meat locker. But isn't he pretty? So we'll probably come back one day and get all cooled out and all that. Okay. He's going in the cooler, huh? He washed out and everything? Yeah, we rinsed him out there. Awesome, cool. So he's pretty clean. Perfect. Cool him down and cape him. Uh, I think just later, I'll cape him later, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Cool. So yeah, we got him taken oh. care of. Awesome <laughs> night, man. That's pretty fun, huh? Okay. Well, thanks for letting him uh, letting us store him there. My pleasure. That was a great day. Um, 
got my access buck. So I feel like this trip, even before that was a success, it basically feels like a vacation. Tomorrow Bridget's gonna hunt in the same tree stand, right? So she's gonna go hunt in the tree stand. I, I really feel like that group of access has gotta show up sooner or later. I'm gonna go sit another ground blind on the same property, um, just further back into those woods. And I don't have much desire to like shoot anything else but they asked me like hey if, sh if you see some does shoot them hope you guys enjoyed that video um make sure you subscribe so we can watch the next day because i think sooner or later bridget's gonna smoke one of these deer hopefully it's tomorrow